They're coming. They're coming your way. They'll be here soon. Will you be ready? Possibly one of the greatest, if not most fascinating indie horrors ever made, you may Nikki. I'll probably keep this short just because I think everyone and their grandmother has already had their say about this game and so there's really not much I can add, but this game is just a classic. It's really hard to believe that this game was made 16 years ago. Yes, 16 years ago. Cave Story came out just about a few months later. I mean, that's crazy, really. So what is you may Nikki and why is it such a big deal? Well, to ask what Yume Nikki is, is kind of a tricky question. It's a game where you play as a hikikomori named Marotsuki. Hikikomoris in Japan are basically shut-ins. They pursue a life of extreme isolation, rarely ever talking to anyone outside their rooms and pretty much never leaving. The reason I mention this is because that's just who Marotsuki is, a young girl with major issues leaving her room. And while we explore her dreams, we can get a glimpse as to why she's like this and possibly some of the things she suffered through. See, the whole game takes place inside her head, never once revealing who her parents are or why exactly she's like this. There are 12 doors that lead to a multitude of worlds, but they're not necessarily levels. To say one door leads to, like, the ice level or the fire level would be egregious, mainly due to the fact that while one door might lead to a place where it rains all the time, that does not mean this world's theme is just rain, rather this room's theme is rain. Because before you know it, you might find a different door within this room that'll lead you to some blood red maze full of creepy girls or a room full of cubes. Yeah, these rooms don't really make sense, like, at all. But why would they? You're in a dream, after all. Rhyme or reason is not something dreams are known to portray. But what is portrayed in these rooms can sometimes lead into something deeper, perhaps even something darker. First and foremost, you have to keep in mind that there is no dialogue in this game whatsoever. There's never once a cutscene where Matatsuki gets called fat or taunted or anything like that. You just have these images and these strange events to interpret from, but even then, none of these has ever been confirmed to be true at all. Still, What's there is still very interesting. Among one of the most interesting rooms belongs to Uboo, a strange black creature with a white face. And yes, he is basically the inspiration for every indie game using a black figure with a white face as a creepy unknown villain. But more than that is the symbolic nature behind him. See, he hides behind this little ice hut under the guise of a girl with blonde hair. If you turn the light off, you have a chance of encountering him, yet it takes some time as it's a very low chance. And you can't just switch it on and off, you have to leave and come back in and then turn it off. Once you're able to summon him though, a very scary sound drones in the background and it kind of shocks you to your senses. If you interact with him, you're stuck in this plane of reality where this strange monster is just groping on these weird looking mountains as it vomits blood and yes the mountains do kind of look like breasts maybe this leads into the theory that Matatsuki might have been coerced into sexual deeds without consent. It's an unfortunate theory that does have some legs, as many people point out the uterus hallways that look super distorted and are really scary looking, as well as the phallic monster that hides behind this wall, smiling at you, groping this handrail. Ugh. And of course, when you reach the top of the stairs and enter the room, you're given this horrifying face that pulses at you, possibly symbolizing the terrifying nature of her assaulter. It's a very unfortunate and uncomfortable theory and it really does have some credence behind it, but I'm not so inclined just to say yet that this is what the game is all about. See, to me, Yume Nikki is more than just a game of exploration. It's a goal, journeying deep into Matatsuki's mind and finding out so much about her. 
To me, yes, there is a hint of sexual assault there, but I personally view this as a sort of fear that she has within herself more so than it is a sexual assault theory. When you delve deep into her mind, you see all these insecurities within her and some creatures that only enhance her anxiety about the outside world. Creatures like the Tengu girls who just hang around with each other yet hate being with her. As soon as you touch one of these girls in their frenzy state, you're transported to a dead end zone. To me, these symbolize the bullies she had to deal with or still currently deals with in school, and the uterus to me always symbolize the horrors of change she's facing as a teenager growing up. Her body is doing strange new things and she's scared, scared of growing up. You can even see this while she's in her Famicom world, all these references to video games, particularly in Earthbound, showing how much of a gamer she is, and it being a world she can escape to. Then again, if she can't escape from the real world through games, she can escape the real world literally, well, in her dreams at least, as she can befriend this one alien that takes her off planet and crash lands on Mars. It's one of the game's most charming events, and to me, it always symbolized her friends online or maybe a pen pal she has. Her crash landing on Mars is really just her wanting to leave her room and being somewhere else, just somewhere more exotic, stranger, and new. It's why she chose Mars in her dreams, because it's barren, but it's a fertile land full of possibilities. The effects can also show off who she portrays herself as. The long hair effect shows who she once was, and the blonde hair shows who she wants to be. As in Japan, some people believe the idealistic beauty comes with more western features like blonde hair. Her fat appearance and her midget appearance could reflect of how other people view her, like her bullies, seeing her as someone who's short and pudgy. There are eyes and hands everywhere in this game, indicating her sense of anxiety, always being watched, and the avoidance of being being touched by anyone or perhaps avoiding to be intimate with people. And of course we can't forget Monoko and the possible accident that happened with her. She's a little girl that changes appearance once you use the traffic light effect. She turns into this deformed thing with several arms poking out of her, possibly symbolizing bones coming out of her. And it's believed by many that this also symbolizes a horrible car accident that she had with this girl, and the fact that she has a name implies that this girl was a good friend, or maybe only a friend of Matsuki. Uh, whether she was responsible for it or not is unknown. There's so, so much more, so goddamn much more. But if I talked about everything, I'd honestly be here for possibly hours. I'd love to get into them all, but I'm really running out of time here. I will say though, I am a little tired of people only remembering this game for the quote unquote sexual assault theories. It's like, sure, you can interpret that for some of these, I guess, but I really don't think that this is the only thing this game should be remembered for, nor should it be the only worthwhile theory that should stick with you. There's a lot more to this game than meets the eye. Hell, I've heard some people theorize that the whole game takes place after a horrible alien invasion occurs, and that's why Matatsuki sees all this weird shit. It all depends on your viewpoint, your interpretation, and the beautiful thing about Yume Nikki is that you're not wrong with any of your theories. The developer of this game has kept their mouth shut about theories and confirmations on theories. Really, it's up to you. If you can dream it, it's possible. Now, of course, I can't end this video off without mentioning the, well, elephant in the room. Yeah, the new Yume Nikki games. Are they worth it? Well, I've never played them before, but honestly, I can't really see how they are. The original will always be a classic to me, and from what I've heard and what I've seen with the new game, I mean, it just doesn't look very appealing, despite the original creator being on board with it. Though, if you're already playing through Yume Nikki and you're craving for more, I'd suggest checking out Yume Tuki. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I haven't played it myself, but a lot of fans attest to its quality. Many say it's a lovingly crafted and well-made sequel with a ton of respect to the original, so I'd say give the game a shot. Just remember. It all started here, this one game, this one dream, this one thing that kept us all invested. It's always there, and it will always be there. It will always be remembered as one of the greatest indie games of all time.